Hi, I'm Scott McClure with the Outdoors Tomorrow Foundation. I'm the Education Director and my primary purpose is to promote Outdoor Adventures. Outdoor Adventures is an in-school physical education class that gets kids outdoors. In fact, a lot of ag science teachers like it because it incorporates a lot of wildlife, a lot of conservation through interactive games. It's a kindergarten through 12th grade program and I'm going to show you a bunch of different highlights of our curriculum. Now as you see these, think about your own students. Think about your third graders, your fourth graders, your sixth graders. Think about that high school freshman or that senior that needs a PE class. The great thing about the outdoors is there's no bias. Everybody can enjoy it. But someone needs to teach them how to do it. And that's what we do. We give you guys the tool, Outdoor Adventures. Hi. The PowerPoint presentation that I want to share with you uh, starts off with just a few images of students out in the field shooting 3D archery, students catching their first fish. And as I go through the PowerPoint, I know the story behind each one of these students. And you're more than welcome to reach out to me later if you want to know the story behind them and, and why I selected them for this presentation. But to really just share with you our mission statement, the Outdoors Tomorrow Foundation's mission statement is to teach outdoor education and to promote and fund conservation of wildlife worldwide. And you think, why are we trying to promote wildlife through a PE class? Basically, we want all students to understand the value of wildlife so that we can have it for future generations by enjoying outdoor skills. We have a lot of different groups that sponsor us, groups from all over the country that love our message. So what is it exactly? Outdoor Adventures is an in-school curriculum for kindergarten through 12th grade. And I know when you look at this picture here, you think, oh my gosh, we have guns in schools. That's just an offshoot of our program. Some schools enjoy outdoor adventures so much that they want to do more activities. So some schools create shotgun shooting teams and some schools create bass fishing teams and archery clubs. So those are just some things that happen beyond the classroom uh, that your students may enjoy. So what is a traditional PE class? Your traditional PE class is basically suiting out, going to a gym and doing activities. But with outdoor adventures, we like to bring in all kinds of outdoor skills, fishing and possible shooting sports for those that are interested. We do have a little video here I'd like to show you. It's a one minute video. So I'll let you watch, kind of take a, a second to see what we do. So the video shows what we do and just a little bit of a recap of all of our programs. So what are the programs include? This particular slide that you're looking at shows all the units that we have currently in black and the new units that we have added August of 2020. Quail conservation, trapping, ATV safety course, slingshots, fly tying, and 3D archery. And we also added an OA elementary K through fifth grade. So the best way to really show you what we do in Outdoor Adventures is to give you some sample lessons. I'm gonna do a sample of some archery, fishing, camp cooking, and wildlife. They're quick little videos that you get a chance to see what we do. And at the same time, I'm gonna come back and show you the actual lessons 
and additional pictures and how this works. So this first slide that you see, we have students participating in a fishing event, uh, mimicking a boat on the tennis courts while they're catching backyard bass. We've got teachers down in the lower left simulating uh, wildlife sounds and trying to determine where sounds are coming from. It's a great lesson. And then you have students shooting archery on a tennis court as well. So those are just a few pictures as we go through this. So the first lesson is the NASP archery program. NASP is the National Archery in Schools program. We are working with NASP in providing that particular archery program because it is the safest sport in America. There is not a single sport in public schools that is safer than NASP archery. As an example, two million students went through this program and shot for two weeks in their schools, in their gyms last year. Zero accidents. So every lesson will have what you see on the screen. Every lesson will have your objective, your expectations, all the materials and all the resources you need. Every lesson will have a bell ringer or some type of journal writing. Every lesson will have a PE activity if you wanna do the PE activity. Then it outlines all the activities for the lesson. You'll have vocabulary. You will have suggested modifications and enrichments. And we have gone into the curriculum all 290 lessons and added distance learning in the enrichment section. So now we'll show you a couple of videos of just simple things like using a string bow and just teaching basic archery skills, just a quick little snippet. So I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration of NASP archery. NASP archery uses these bows right here and these targets that we have. With NASP archery, it's the safest sport in America. The teachers present this to their principals and they get worried. Oh my gosh, you're gonna put a bow in my student's hand. Well, what's unique about this program is you teach to shoot with these, what they call a bowstring. You simulate the archery motion and they learn how to do the, all the steps, which helps them stay safe. So I'm gonna have my two students go through this process and mimic me as I do it. And I'll let you focus on them. I want y'all to get in your stance. So right here on the line, go ahead and put your bow hand up draw back and when you get a good tension just go ahead and release and let go of the string there's actually 11 steps in this process but we're just demonstrating a few simple ones right now so you can see that they learn how to shoot with this before they ever get to a bow and they draw back and then they just simply release with their fingers and drop the string and they do that same motion with the bow it is the safest sport in america and i know that your kids would love it this program starts in the fourth grade I hope you enjoyed just kind of seeing how that works. You take the string bow, they learn how to use that, then they can transfer the, the memory skills over to a regular bow and it's perfectly safe. Schools love archery so much, some schools build archery gyms. This is Allen High School in Allen, Texas. They built a full gym just for archery and you can see a tournament taking place there. Kids love it. This is another shot of that particular gym, full-time archery gym built for outdoor adventures. Here's another one. This is Arlington Independent School District. Arlington converted an old mothballed elementary school and converted it to a full-time archery range. It's an amazing facility. They even have video cameras at the top showing with how well the kids are shooting. Another school down in the Houston area, Pasadena Memorial, took an old ag science building and converted it to their archery gym as well. And you're gonna get a chance to see some video on this later. So knowing your knots, this is our fishing unit. The fishing unit is actually four to six weeks long, depending on what you want to do. And again, same format. You have all your expectations, your objectives, your materials, and your resources. And then all the activities, the journal writing, the PE things. And if you want to do additional activities, and like I said, we've built in distance learning in all the lessons. So we simulate some of these activities. I've got a quick little video here that's going to show you two of our teachers that teach outdoor adventures are going through some activities and they build their skills up to they have to identify fish and they also can play some tournament games. But when they catch one of these fish, they're going to drag it in and you could be... Okay, so we got one. Yeah, we got a student with one. So if we were actually playing the game right now, 
different yes. colors would be worth different points. And if you're not familiar, you have a little casting plug right there. It goes inside there, Ooh. and we're going to restock the fish. Yes. Nice job, Thank Kelsey. you. Thank you. So I'm going to go back out here and put some more in the water. So that's just simple casting exercises. As the teachers, excuse me, our students today get better at this, they have to improve on their skills. So now they're going to have to identify the fish that they catch. Uh -oh. Who can be the first one to catch an orange fish? When they get really good at this, I can show you in a moment how we'll do a tournament and they can actually participate in a tournament. Uh, instead of a March Madness, it would be a fishing madness. And we got one over here, Kia, nice job. Thank so we're you. gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get the fish, we're gonna ethically take it off the hook, and we're gonna identify, do you know what kind of fish that is? I do not. That's okay, it's a bass. So we have a nice bass right here. And if we had our book with us today, we could decide what body of water, if that was legal and ethical to keep. Now students can go home and teach these same skills to their parents. Would you mind putting that back in the water for me? Yeah. Thank you. In the progression of angler education, once they learn how to cast and can identify the fish, we want to teach them how to do tournaments. So we have set up a tournament-like situation. Kelsey's over here and inside the paint, inside the maroon area is her boat. While Kia is back here in the center court area, her boat is circular, she can't step out of the boat. If y'all step out of the boat, you do not have life vest on. It's another variation of the game. They could put life vest on and see how well they do it. If you step out of the boat, you're disqualified. We have fish in the middle. Let's see how many fish you can catch. We'll say in a five minute period of time, the boat, the captain, the angler that wins gets to advance in the tournament. If you hit each other, it's minus points. You get five points for each fish. Go. Oh. <laughs> so, and while we're playing the game, I am not on the boat. She has to get it onto the boat. She has to successfully drop it on the boat. There we go. She now has five points. Y'all keep going. Fishing is one of the most popular units. This particular picture that you see right now is Fishing Wall of Fame. And what's amazing is this particular teacher takes their students fishing and then it takes a picture of the students that catch their first fish. It is an amazing pit sight when you walk in there and see all these students that have caught their first fish in a public school or private school setting. Just a few pictures of kids catching their first fish. It's a, it's a memory for a lifetime and they'll always know they caught that fish in your class. Camp cooking, one of the favorites of the students because they get to eat. And we'll teach you how to use these Dutch ovens that you see in this image right here. Super easy, kids love it. It's a lot better than just roasting a hot dog. You get an actual meal that you get to learn in class. So I know what you're thinking. How in the world are you gonna teach wildlife and hunting as a PE class? This is very important. Hunting and wildlife is not a required unit for outdoor adventures. There are more units in the program than you could possibly teach. You get to pick the units that work best for you. For example, ice fishing is a unit. It's not very popular in Texas. But if a school in Michigan wanted to cover it, they could. So these are just some examples of this particular unit. If you don't want to do the hunting piece, you can do the wildlife piece. And we got a little video about wildlife, and that's a particular classroom. And again, this is teacher preference, school preference, if you want to teach this unit. So in Hunter Ed, again, same format. Everything is there. These students can become Hunter Ed certified in your class. It's a service that you can provide for those students. Everything I said, like I mentioned, is outlined for you. And so here's a quick little video of just a simple little game, a predator-prey game, and the, and the teachers will demonstrate this for you. Okay, we're going to demonstrate a wildlife conservation game. The way this game works is we have quail, which I'm going to be a quail, and Kia's going to be a quail, and we have a bobcat. If you'll look at the gym floor, the gym floor has circles. They could be hula hoops, we're using jump ropes. Those are safe zones. Those are safe habitat. When we live over here on this side of the gym, we gotta to get to that side of the gym and get water or we're not gonna make it. But we have a bobcat. The bobcat, if the bobcat catches us, we've been eaten. But she can't touch us if we're in our safe zones. Good news is we can run, the bobcat has to walk. So 
we both made it because we had plenty of safe zones. But to simulate the game, if we destroyed the habitat, we came in with bulldozers, we built houses, we built shopping malls, we built roads, there's no more habitat. Okay, so now there's no place for us to hide except those two. We still have to get water. Let's go. Ah! So the simulation there is when you have more people playing, more bobcats and more quail, the less habitat you have, the more likely you're going to get eaten. So just a quick simulation, we have 14 lessons just like this in our wildlife program. So once the kids and students learn about predators and prey and habitat and how that works, then some of your students may want to go hunting. And these are just images of some students that got that opportunity. Again, more opportunities, including an alligator hunt for some students in the past. Some of the lessons in Hunter Ed are dressing up in camo and going outside and, you know, hiding and playing hide and go seek. Other examples of the students in the lower right where these students here are trying to sneak up on this particular student and they're having to use their senses of sound and hearing and then trying to get around wildlife and or how wildlife can get around you. It's a great activity. The students love it. Again, this is not for everybody, but we have some schools that will go down to the meat processor and grab a buck or deer from there and process the deer at the school with the students, showing them how if you want organic, pure organic meat, it's a great protein source, nothing's better than wild game. So what does an outdoor adventures classroom look like? Now I know most schools are not gonna have a classroom like what you see right now. But this is a classroom in New York, and the kids love it. So other classrooms, I told you about the Wall of Fame, the Fish Wall of Fame. This is the other part of their classroom, showing the different parts of guns and archery, how that works. Here's another school uh, that is primarily a, uh, a Hispanic school, and they've got parts of a boat in the background, parts of fish in the background, parts of the firearms in the background, and they're actually eating venison in the classroom that, they, that the teacher got and cooked for them. So we'll transition here. Why would a school offer outdoor adventures? I'm not gonna read all this to you, but this program is nationwide. We're in 36 states. Teacher training is free. The kids love it. It's lifelong skills. It's all about safety. And instead of teaching your regular PE class of rackets and, and balls and games, teach them a skill they can use forever, like archery or fishing. It promotes conservation, and what we found is 50% of our students are not involved in the outdoors, and they love the class because it's new, and the principals love it too. I won't read this particular letter, but if you, if you have a principal that would like to talk to a principal, have them talk to Jill Stafford, Lowry Freshman Center. It's a great letter, so I highlighted the red. Here's what she said. It provided opportunities, excellent option for all students. It started three different clubs there, an archery club, a competitive shooting team, and a fishing club. And they're run by parents, not the school. It gave the students a place to belong. It was safe and productive activity for the students. They were committed to practice coming before and after school. Again, these are PE students coming to school before and after to be a part of something. What I like to tell folks is this. The outdoors has no bias. It doesn't matter who you are. The outdoors is for everybody. So it leads into this next slide. It is for everyone. Got a young man with a pink arm guard on there shooting a bow. He only had one arm. He shot with his teeth. We had a student on the far right in the green shirt who didn't have arms and he went on a shooting event and shot with his feet. And we have students there in the middle, the Hispanic students there with the bows. They were actually at school for an algebra uh, tutoring session and they were shooting three arrows, taking their three scores and going doing slope and plot as a algebra tutoring session. It's amazing how it works. At this particular school here, they actually did a lot of game calls outside and they were shooting arrows outside and simulating if they were going hunting. This was an ATA Explore bow hunting kit. If any of you are familiar, it's a great kit. And they were actually decorating their skulls and some things and just to have fun and showing different ways to be creative. 
they had a slingshot program, and this is part of our new curriculum. Kids love the slingshots. Bass fishing teams I mentioned are very popular right now. Sporting clay teams are very popular for schools. This was something I didn't realize happened, but we had some schools that created Dutch oven cooking teams, and they actually had competitions. The picture on the lower right there is actually a school that would open up their gym and open up their outdoor area, and they would come in and do a potluck dinner, and all the parents would come in on a Friday after school and share a meal together. It brought the whole community together. Didn't see that one coming, but that was pretty cool. Kayak clubs, paddle sports, kids love getting on the water. So what does OA do? It engages the non-involved. If you are a student in PE, you're not in athletics, you're not in band, why not give them something that they can enjoy forever and be excited about? OA fills that need. Schools love it too. Creates a place to belong, creates all kinds of clubs, it improves student attendance because now these kids want to be there. So how does it work? How can you get outdoor adventures? Basically, you want to contact me and I'm going to give you my contact information. But here are three different ways that you can buy the Outdoor Adventures curriculum. The K-12 through curriculum is $1,000 per school. But since we are a nonprofit, you buy the curriculum and we're going to turn around and give you back a $1,000 equipment grant to go buy archery, rods and reels, Dutch ovens, tents, whatever you need. We also have a full school set, 4,750. This includes all the NASP equipment. This includes fishing, outdoor cooking. And we're gonna go ahead and give you the $1,000 curriculum with it. So it's a $5,750 value. We knock off $1,000 of it, 4,750. And we have two small equipment sets. They're $12.50 each, but we will include the curriculum with that at a $1,000 value. So this is actually a $2,250 value that we'll sell you for $1,250. These are all one-time fees. We do not charge an annual fee, and your teacher training is free. So what does a kit look like? I won't go through all of these with you, but just know you get all the NASP equipment, you get all the cast iron Dutch ovens, and you get spin casting, fly rods, and spinning rods. If you want to get one of the smaller sets, it doesn't include the archery, but you can do fishing and survival and orienteering, or you can do the fishing and outdoor camp cooking. One of those sets are $12.50. So contact me. We want to change kids' lives. I'm the Director of Education for the Outdoors Tomorrow Foundation, scott at gootf.com, 469-805-2390. Thank you.